Hey guys, I had a number of questions about uh, overclocking on the uh, Gigabyte G31M-S2L motherboard. This was the uh, budget uh, $60 socket 775 motherboard. Uh, I'm going to do a little video on uh, some of the overclocking features, BIOS uh, features and stuff of this board so you can see why uh, I do like it for uh, a beginner's uh, overclocking board. As you can see, we have the board in here right now. Um, I have this overclocked at the moment. This is my one of my Q9300, 2.5 gigahertz. And uh, we currently have this overclocked at 3.25 gigahertz, just using uh, basic settings in the BIOS. Uh, as you can see, temperatures are 39, 39, 37, and 40. So uh, staying nice and quiet on the cores, and this is a... Uh, Prime 95 stable, so we're going to reboot it here and uh, show you some of the features in the BIOS. Okay, for the most part, it's a fairly standard uh, BIOS layout, standard CMOS, advanced. Uh, advanced has a few features in it that uh, you may find useful. Uh, they have the uh, boot setup, password check, smart capabilities, uh, some of the system halt stuff. Uh, down here we have the uh, enhanced halt if you want it to uh, cut back on the uh, multipliers, run a little bit cooler. I, I do happen to run that because I, I do like uh, having it cooler when I'm not uh, gaming or using it where I really need all of the overclock. Uh, virtualization technology, that stuff can be disabled, EIST can be disabled. Basically I just run the uh, CPU thermal monitor on, CPU enhanced halt on, um, that's your choice whether you want to do it or not. Uh, no execute memory protect, that I have enabled also. Otherwise all the rest of the enhancements are, are turned off and uh, you can just set up your initial display adapter which either has the uh, PCI or you can use the onboard graphics or PEG is for your uh, PCI Express slot. Uh, integrated per peripherals. Uh, it's all pretty standard stuff here. Uh, primary ID, on chip, secondary. Um, nothing too fancy as far as overclocking there. Power management, basically the same thing, or they wanted to uh, power off power on. Um, basically all of our overclocking stuff is going to be right down here in your motherboard intelligence tweaker or MIT as it's referred to. Okay up here you can see the robust graphic of booster. can be set to auto, can be set to fast or turbo. Uh, CPU clock ratio, it's going to read your uh, clocks on your processor. Like in my case this one has a 7.5 multiplier this one comes up with a full clock of 7, but then it lets me fine-tune and add that half clock here to give me my 7.5. Uh, CPU host clock enabled. If you disable this, it's going to set everything back to stock. It's going to put your uh, stock speed in, stock multiplier, stock front side bus, 333 on this processor. But if we enable that, now it's going to let us go down here and change whatever number we want um, for our front side bus. In this case I'm using 433 for the 3.25. Um, basically everything else is going to stay standard. PCI Express frequency, we're going to leave that on auto. Performance enhance, standard is best, it's most stable. But it also offers a turbo and extreme if you want to play around with them and try to get more juice out of it. Uh, system memory multiplier. This one I get a lot of questions on. Uh, it has an auto setting which will automatically overclock it. The 800 here is my standard speed. Uh, on auto it would run it at 1039. If I put a 1.6 multiplier it will drop it all the way down to 693 if I wanted to underclock it. 2.0 is uh, 866, which is usually your standard. It's going to bump it up from 8 to 866, which is going to keep it pretty reliable. Or you can go to 2.4, which is going to raise it again to that 1039.
9 mark. If your ram can take it, great. If not, uh, you can always back down. Okay, and uh, system voltages controls. Now these you can set to manual and adjust your uh, DRAM voltage if you want to overvolt your RAM. Front side bus over voltage where you can uh, overclock that too. And your CPU voltage control which you can set manually. But to tell you the nice thing about this board or what I really liked about it for a beginner's board is that basically auto is your best setting on it. If you really know what you're doing and really want to tweak it and get every little bit out of it you certainly can play with the settings but generally just putting it on auto it's going to auto volt everything for you it actually runs my processor at about 1.28 volts which is perfect um, and it also auto volts my uh, RAM for me so for a beginning overclocking board it's uh, it's got a lot of nice features if you really want to tweak it it's not a full uh, featured overclocking board like maybe say a high-end ASUS board or or some of your more expensive or overclocking boards but for just a basic uh, board to get you into overclocking I like the fact that it does most of the uh, things for you that you could basically just come in here uh, enable this uh, CPU host clock type in a number and that's it save it then boot it see if it works if not come back and change the number again just leave everything on standard and your uh, memory multiplier where it is and and it's basically going to start right up and uh, run for you <laughs> we're just going to boot it up here See, we're running Windows 7 Ultimate on this one. Okay, and here's our front side bus at 433. Uh, it's going to run our memory at 433 also instead of the stock 400 so it's going to give us an overclock on the memory another interesting feature is when you leave the uh, ram on auto it's going to auto change your clocks for you so it's going to loosen up your timings to make sure it's more stable this is uh, g skill ddr2800 uh, normally it runs at 555 15 clocks uh, let me get my multiplier up here i'm not sure if you can see that Okay, as you can see here, the 433 clock on the uh, frequency, and now it has the clock settings at 5, 6, 6, and 17. So it loosened up the timing automatically for me to make sure that it would uh, run stable. Um, and also here on the bus speed at the 433, I've seen a lot of people say that they didn't think these motherboards could go past about 350 front side bus. Um, I found that the uh, limit seems to be about 450. I can get right up to about 450. I've even gotten a little over, but then it starts getting really unstable. So anything under 450, you're, you're doing pretty good, and that should give you a lot of different options depending on uh, what processor you're using. But uh, anyway, that's going to do it for uh, this video. I hope this answers some of your questions. If you have any more questions on the board or if there was something that uh, I missed in the video that you wanted to see, certainly let me know. But uh, this, I still recommend this board. It's a great inter intro board for somebody just getting into overclocking that doesn't want to mess around with a lot of features, a lot of different stuff with your timings on your RAM, uh, a lot of tweaking on the voltage. Uh, it does a lot of that for you, and it's a great way to get a... Uh, nice little overclock on a budget board. So thank you for watching.